Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup with People's Dispatch where we bring you some of the top stories from across the globe. Let's take a look at today's headlines. Crackdown on students protesting against alleged police murder in Swaziland. Israeli court defers verdict on forced eviction of Palestinians from Silwan. Tribal communities protest against increased militarization in India. Five student activists from the University of Swaziland were released from a maximum security prison this week. The students were arrested after a crackdown on a memorial service for the victim of a suspected police killing. 25-year-old Thabani Nakmonye had been missing since the night of May 8th. The police told his family on May 13 that his car had been found at the Sigot Veni station after allegedly being involved in an accident. However, the police claimed that they had not found his body. The family also spotted a bullet hole and a missing wheel on his car. Moreover, after visiting the site of the alleged accident, they found Thabani's body under some shrubs. When they returned to the police station on May 15, they found that the bullet hole in his car had been partially covered and the tire had been found. 3,000 students marched to the Sigodweni police station on May 17 to demand an inquiry into what they alleged was a murder. As they were proceeding to the regional headquarters in Manzini, they were attacked with tear gas and rubber bullets. Despite this, they reached the police station and handed a petition to the regional commissioner. On the day of Thabani's memorial service on May 21st, hundreds of students again marched to the station in Manzini. They handed a second petition to the police regarding the violence on May 17th. Shortly after police opened fire at students, forcing them to seek cover in the nearby bus station. However, the police deployed tear gas, leading to the death of a four-month-old baby. Students then reached the site of Thabani's memorial service with the police following shortly after. They attacked the crowd with tear gas and batons. After escaping from the ground, some students hurled stones and damaged a nearby police post. It was then that the five students were arrested. However, they have maintained that they were not involved in any attack. Meanwhile, the police crackdown on the students sparked widespread outrage across Swaziland. Justice for Thabani has now emerged as the face of the ongoing struggle against the country's absolute monarch, King Maswati III. People are mobilizing against unemployment, poverty, corruption and the king's control over the political system. An Israeli court has postponed its verdict on the forced displacement of Palestinians from Jerusalem, Silwan area, similar to Sheikh Jarrah. Seven families in Silwan's Batna Al Hawa neighborhood were handed eviction orders in 2020. The Atarit Kohanim settler group had sued the area's Palestinian residents, claiming that the land belonged to Jewish people in 1948. 87 families or over 700 Palestinians in the area are currently facing eviction orders. 119 buildings housing over 1,500 Palestinians are also at risk of demolition in the nearby Al Bastan neighborhood. The Najjar and the Qayyad al Rajabi families from Batna al Hawa filed an appeal in court on May 26. During the proceedings, Palestinians gathered outside the courthouse to protest against ethnic cleansing. However, Israeli forces present at the scene started attacking and beating the protesters. As reported by Al Kastal, 15 year old, Sultan Surhan was then forcibly arrested. The court has postponed a decision on the two families' appeal without scheduling a date. Meanwhile, the harassment and violence against Palestinians in Sheikh Jarrah has continued. In a particularly brutal attack, 16-year-old Jana Kiswani was shot in the back with a rubber bullet in her courtyard. A UN special session to discuss the human rights situation in Gaza and the occupied territories was convened on May 27. Human rights chief Michel Bachelet stated that Israel's attack on Gaza, if found to be disproportionate, will amount to war crimes. The impact of Israel's apartheid and occupation was also discussed by the World Health Assembly on May 26. The body adopted a draft resolution to improve health conditions in the occupied territories, despite opposition by countries including Israel and the US. Here is People's Dispatch correspondent Abdul Rahman to talk more about this issue. Ongoing 74th session of the World Health Assembly adopted a draft decision yesterday to improve the condition of health in the occupied Palestinian territories and Syrian, occupied Syrian Burna. The decision was accepted despite the objections raised by Israel and United States of America. Out of 136 countries present and voting, uh, uh, 83 countries voted in favor and 14 countries voted 
against the decision. The decision is based on a detailed report prepared by the Director General of the World Health Organization uh, about the health condition, condition of health uh, of, uh, in occupied Palestinian territories and Syria and Golan, uh, including East Jerusalem. The report clearly mentions that the occupation, uh, uh, the collective punishment uh, carried out by the Israeli occupation from time to time uh, in Gaza and in West Bank, uh, its uh, discriminatory policies and its restrictions imposed on the movement within the occupied territories and between the occupied territories, uh, all of this has created a situation where the overall health infrastructure in the occupied uh, Palestinian territories, including East Jerusalem and Syria Golan, has gone down massively, uh, leading to a, a, a rising gap between the illegal Jewish settlers living within the occupied territories uh, and the Palestinians. Uh, the, the gap is just reflected in uh, indicators like uh, life uh, expectancy. The Palestinians have uh, 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 nine years less life expectancy on an average, average than the uh, uh, Jewish settlers in, within the occupied territories. Their infant mortality rate is also five times higher than the uh, illegal settlers within the uh, occupied territory, which clearly shows how this, how the Israeli occupation has carried forward, uh, carried on discriminatory policies, failing uh, uh, in its obligation under the Fourth Geneva Convention related to the occupied territory. Though the, the report does not mention uh, the uh, recent uh, Gaza uh, bombing uh, and the recent as attacks carried out in uh, uh, East Jerusalem and West Bank, uh, the member countries, while discussing the draft decision, mentioned it clear, uh, mentioned the effect of those bombings on the uh, uh, and its compounding effect on the overall health conditions of the Palestinians. In our next story, we go to the Indian state of Chhattisgarh, where tribal communities have been protesting. Since May 12th, thousands of people from around 30 villages have opposed the setting up of a security camp in the Silgar village in Sukma. Communities have argued that the increased presence of forces leads to brutal repression. Despite this, the camp was opened on May 12th, leading to daily protests. During one such protest on May 17th, security forces opened fire on thousands of villagers, killing three people. They claimed that those killed were affiliated with Maoist insurgents and had attacked the camp. However, the families of the victims and local residents have denied these charges. Activist Kamal Shukla has also pointed to the larger context of suppression. He stated that stones, water and tear gas had been used against the tribal protesters. Moreover, prominent tribal leader Sony Soria and lawyer Bela Bhatia were initially also prevented from reaching the site. In a press release dated May 25th, the government stated that the security camps restored quote, normalization in the area. However, the release made no mention of the killings at the Silga protest. People from the area also met with district and police officials on May 23rd to demand an independent inquiry. They also returned 10,000 rupees which had been given to the families of the deceased as compensation. The collector of the Sukma district announced a magisterial inquiry into the incident late that day. However, journalist Ashutosh Bhardwaj has pointed to serious issues in its terms of reference. For instance, he argues that the inquiry presupposes that there was, in fact, an encounter. Local accounts have maintained that no insurgents were present at the site and the protesters were unarmed. That's all the time we have for this episode of the International Daily Roundup. For more such videos and stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you for watching.